Ugh, I'm being pulled over, again. What does the police want this time? I do not have drugs or any weapons. Hi madam, please pull out your license and registration. Here you go officer. Thank you. Do you have any idea why I stopped you? Oh, no. I do not know why you stopped me. It appears that the vehicle you were driving has a busted trunk. Oh, yeah, I knew that. I just did not have the money for repairments. Please stay in your car while I check your license and registration. It's just a little damage. Well, I guess I have to deal with the consequences. Hello? Hey Amy, this is Rockwell speaking. I might be going to the store late, because police pulled me over yard for an equipment violation. Well, just make sure you're not doing anything stupid. I'm sure you do not have any drugs or weapons, or any contraband, or any stolen property. Amy, calm down. I do not have any contraband or any stolen property. It took me like an hour to drive here from Great Neck. Raquel, let me know when you are still driving. I need to make sure Caroline is ready to complete her final draft on her project with Stacy and Cheryl for her project as well. Okay. Okay, Raquel, you have no criminal records. I'm going to write you a citation and you're free to go. Okay, here is your citation. Drive safely, and have a nice day. You know, that was pretty weird. I am getting my car fixed soon. But anyway, time to head to the store and get what Amy needed. I wonder where Aunt Raquel is. It's been over 75 minutes. Hey, Caroline, do you have any idea what is taking Aunt Raquel so long from the store? It's been over 75 minutes. No idea, Cheryl. She was supposed to bring us the electric poster board for each of our school projects. I only have four days left and I did not start my final draft. Did you tell Mrs. Calhoun? I wish I did, but Mrs. Calhoun is very strict. I better call Stacy. So why did you need to see me, Caroline? Your mother let me in by the way. Oh hey Cheryl. Hey Stacy. I was just getting ready to prepare for our final draft. But my Aunt Raquel is taking too long with our electric boards. Well, it's probably because Aunt Raquel got pulled over by police after an equipment violation. But don't worry, you girls will turn in your projects as soon as Aunt Raquel arrives. You know babe, I just think we will get a good grade on this partner paper. Look how much we wrote. I agree. I think we will. <coughs> Ugh, I feel weird now. Here, let me feel your head. Oh my! You might be sick. Let me get my mom. Oh dear, you have a high fever honey. Wait, what? How can I get a fever when we need to finish our group paper? I'm afraid you'll need some time off babe. I'll let you just sit on the couch to rest. Here, just sit here and rest, until your father gets back. Well. I guess everything is going to escalate, because of my illness. Man, I had so much beer. Woman, what are you doing standing on the street? Move it, we almost ran you over. Mind your own business woman and drive around me. Excuse me. You do not ever speak to my wife like that. Oh shut up mister and go drink some beer. Get drunk at a bar. Excuse me. Don't you ever speak to my own husband like that. Hey, what are you doing? Back away from our car right this instance. <sighs> oh my gosh, I cannot believe it. That drunk woman stole our car and is evading from us. Wow, I cannot believe how stupid people are these days. It's always our friends who get their car stolen, and now us. I wonder if Brianna is still keeping my cake safe. I want Alexa to be happy. Or maybe it should not matter, because I put too much sugar, so I might have to start over, unless Brianna is keeping the cake safe. And I also wonder if my parents are back with Alexa's big present. Hello? Sarah, I just need to let you know that we might be late with Alexa's birthday present. A drunk woman stole our car and is running away with it. What? Are you serious? Yes, I am serious. 
Our car has a Lexus gift, and it might be damaged. We'll let you know when we got our car back. And also, is Alexa's birthday cake finished? Yes, it is, but I'm letting Brianna look after it until the party on Saturday. I wonder how the cake is doing. Wait a minute, what in the name of Mark Twain? No wonder why the cake got destroyed on top. Plus the berries are missing. You don't need to worry Brianna, because I am actually about to start over. The cake has too much sugar anyway. However, I want to make this an ice cream cake. You can help if you want. Okay, amazing. Oh, and weird story, my parents got their car stolen by a drunk woman. Hello. Hello, Mr. Sedgwick. The Hernandez family is here now. Okay, send them over to the conference room. I will be there shortly. Good morning, Kelsey, Angel and Mr. and Mrs. Hernandez. Welcome to Revere Plains High School area number 3. I am Clayton Sedgwick, the building principal. Welcome, I am Harriet Conway, the vice principal. Hello, I am Tracy Benton, the guidance counselor. Hello, it's nice to meet all of you. My name is Linda Hernandez, and this is my husband, Rick Hernandez. These are our two children, Angel Hernandez, who is in the 10th grade, and Kelsey Hernandez, who is in the ninth grade. Let's get started. Kelsey and Angel, we have created your student IDs. Your old school emailed us an image of each of your portraits. Here are your IDs. Here are some copies of a student handbook. There is a lot to read. Let me go over some of the school rules you need to follow. First is attendance. If you are late, you need to go to the main office for a tardy slip, and if you get no excuses, First five are warnings, next five are lunch detentions, and eleventh or more is after school or Saturday detention. If you are absent, parents must give us a call. If a parent does not give a call, students will get the same penalties as an unexcused tuddy. In addition, attendance is required by law, and if you are absent too much, we will have to report you to the Palmer County Sheriff's Department. Next is the electronic policy. You are allowed to have your electronics, such as cell phones and laptops, with you throughout the school day, but you have to have permission to use them in class by your teacher. However, there are also school laptops the school can offer you. If you wish to bring your school laptop with you, do not hesitate to do so. Third is the behavior policy. It's very simple, always behave in class and assemblies. Be respectful to your teachers and classmates, and other people and do not especially outburst. Fourth is the lunch policy. You can spend any way you want in lunch, but it has to be in school grounds. And make sure you clean up after yourselves. Anytime you leave mess, it's at least one lunch detention, unless you get a 6th through 10th unexcused tuddy. Mrs. Conway is usually in charge of all penalties, detentions and suspensions. Sometimes I also give out detentions. Also, Angel and Kelsey, we have created your schedules. Your schools gave us your academic records, so here are your schedules. And Mr. and Mrs. Hernandez, we will mail you a parent contact log form if you need to call or email other parents. Any questions? I don't think so. Okay. Mr. and Mrs. Hernandez, you may leave now, and your children can go to their third period classes. All right, kids. Your mother and I are leaving now. Remember to behave in school, and have a good day. Goodbye. 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 Second period will end soon, so the bell will ring. When it rings you may go to your third period class. And Kelsey, your parents told me how much of an angel you are. And Angel, your parents told me you're not really good at math. I can understand that, because my brother sucked at math too. Yeah, my two sons and their wives were very bad at math when they were young. That makes sense. I always fail my math tests, but still pass the class anyway. The bell has rang. You may head to third period now. Good luck in your classes, and have a nice day. Well, it seems like I have to go to exploring careers with Mr. Jennings right now. How about you? I have Mrs. Vincent right now for English. I should head to my class now. 
I'll see you later, Angel. Goodbye. Goodbye. So, Angel, how was your day at school? Pretty good. How about you? Are those your new friends? Yes, they are. Behind me are Kiana Ellsworth, the striped shirt, and Tegan Ziegler, the white hair ribbon. Hello, I'm Angel, Kelsey's brother, and I am in the 10th grade. Oh, there's our ride. I'll see you tomorrow, Kiana and Tegan. See, see you, you tomorrow, tomorrow Kelsey. Kelsey. You know, sometimes I get a funny feeling when it comes to any type of trouble. Well, I have funny feelings too whenever trouble occurs. And sometimes, I may want to go like this. No, that was crazy, man. But a lot, it happens, when I go near girls, and I want to do that, especially in front of Sarah. I get it. I get the same feelings when I think of girls too. I might feel like doing that in school if we get a referral. Oh my goodness, Nicole. That's not how you do a handstand. Ha 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 ha. No, that was a sarcastic move. Remember, this night is sarcastic night, so I am not really doing a handstand. This is such a funny episode, like the episode when Tim and Perry sarcastically freaked out over a gun. I agree with you. Ray, Asher, Neil, and our younger friends need to see this, but Ray is continuing to have the funny feeling. Tomorrow morning, my kids will get their shots, but Sally is so scared to get her shot. Anders and Seth got their shots and they were brave, but Sally cried after she got her shot. Well, you know what they say Tanya. Some kids can take them, but some kids cannot. I'm so scared to get my shot again. It hurts when I get a shot. Well Sally, you remember when me and Seth got our shots, we were brave. It was just a little pinch, like mommy said. Besides, even Uncle David and Aunt Andrea were scared of shots when they were little. Anders is right Sally, there might be a chance you can get used to it. It might be momentarily. Sally is still scared. Oh, hey Farida, Dexter, Kayla, and Luna. Hey Tanya, I guess you brought your kids here too. Yes I did, Sally is still scared to get her shot. I was on the phone with Andrea, and she can guarantee Sally it will not hurt a lot, it will just hurt a little. Kayla, Luna, why don't you go play with Anders, Sally, and Seth while me and Dexter talk to their mother. So mom, why do I hear that Sally is scared to get her shot? Well, Mrs. Merritt here took Anders, Sally, and Seth to the doctors when they were younger, and Sally cried after she got her shot. Uncle Edgar and Aunt Haley went through the same, including Anders, Sally, and Seth's Uncle David and Aunt Andrea. I remember when I got a shot, I first got scared when I first got it, but it was just a little pinch. Hey, Kayla and Luna. Hey Anders. Sally, and Seth, me and Luna are here, along with Dexter, to get our shots. Oh, what a coincidence. We're here too. We each cousins of our paternal relatives, who are friends. We are here for a shot each. But Sally is very scared to get a shot again. We told her it will hurt a little bit, but not too much. Coincidentally, Farda, Dexter, Kayla, and Luna are here for the same. I bet your children and Haley and Edgar's children are not scared of shots anymore. You call the word, you're Tiberius, a word? Well, let me think of a phrase. This day's you're Tiberius. I wonder why Kyle made up a word like that. What word are you talking about? Kyle made up some word named you're Tiberius. Yo Tiberius. Interesting. What does it mean? Kyle says it means stupid. So let me get this straight. Your friend Kyle made up a word, that means stupid? Exactly. I can just use it right now. That man who shot me, is Yo Tiberius. So I guess I can use that word if that troublemaker from my school does something stupid. That's a very Yo Tiberius thing you ever did. I say to the troublemakers, That word makes no sense man. It's not even a real word. Well you know, my brother learned it from his friend Kyle. So what if I used this sentence? Shut your yo Tiberius mouth. What does it mean anyway? Kyle told Miles it means stupid. You? 
You're the main reason why we got written up today in Mrs. Handlin's class. No, you got us in trouble, because you snitched. We would have not gotten in trouble if you told on me for spilling paint all over Jose. No. None of this would have happened if you did not spill paint on Jose. Not again, they are fighting. And it's all because Joyce spilled paint on me in Mrs. Honglong's class, and I told on her. Joyce lead, Mrs. Honglong asked anybody else who was telling the truth, and Craig said I was telling the truth and Joyce lead. It caused Joyce and Craig to argue and Mrs. Honglong had enough. Stay out of this, you. Couple. Hey, why did you just call us that? What is wrong with you, you nonsensical brat? Hey, Alexandra, I became promoted to become a 6th grade English teacher at Revere Plains Middle School Area Number 4, instead of being a substitute. Aaron, that's amazing. Hear that, Michelle? Your father got a promotion at work. Oh, that's amazing, Dad. You might be teaching some of the stories to 6th graders, like the ones I read. Well, I do want to teach students a story written by Cynthia Rolland, such as Stray, or a horror story by my favorite author, Edgar Allan Poe. Well, you know our favorite children's author, Dr. Dr. Seuss. Seuss. There we go. This room is complete. Yo, can you let go? I'm asking you the same thing, man. Wait, are we stuck? Hold on. I feel funny. I'm using the bathroom. Oh my goodness. I'm in your body, and you're in mine. How in bloody hell did this happen? My god this is getting weird. What's getting weird? Jumping Gia Chef at. Toby, EJ, what happened to you boys? We're stuck together. Wait, did you switch bodies? Unfortunately, yes, we did. Alright, let's pull you boys out. Jesus, you boys are strong. How are you both stuck? A note. It says, ha ha ha, this paint is sticky. If you get paint on you and stick it on someone, it's impossible to get it off. And worse, you switch bodies. What the actual fuck? That makes no sense. This is not a cartoon world. What kind of paint creator would do this? Okay Joyce, I arrived. Good. Just make sure the door is not locked, and steal Ryan's childish sister's gaming laptop. Okay, I'm on it. Lower your voice dude, what if someone hears you breaking in? Just be careful so you do not get caught by the fat people. Oops. Well I'm going in. With me luck. Okay, and knock out some people if you can. Alright, I got the laptop. Joyce will be proud. I will send it to her. Now I need to get the fuck out of here before someone catches me. Hey, where's my laptop? It was right here, now it's gone. Hey Marina, what's the problem? When I entered my room, my laptop was gone. It was just here, and all of a sudden, it's gone. What? Are you serious? Who could have stolen your laptop? I'm not sure, but I need to find it. I want to play games with Callie again. We looked everywhere. I cannot find my laptop. I give up. I guess Callie will hate me for the rest of my life. <laughs> there though my sweetheart. Everything is going to be okay sweetie. We'll get you a new laptop. I'm sure Callie will understand. Are you sure? Callie is not going to like it. I promised her a rematch tomorrow. Well, guess who from Joyce's gang broke into our house and stole Marina's laptop? and wrote this note to me, let me tell you what it says. Ryan the stupid brother of Marina, if you are reading this, I took Marina's laptop and gave it to Joyce. It's payback for when you and Brianna snitched on her and Judith for stealing both your laptops. Who is it bro? Wesley Morton, the gangster who is childish and public like Joyce, Mr. and Mrs. Morton, I believe Wesley took something that belongs to my sister Marina and gave it to Joyce. Young man, what did you steal from Ryan Pittman's sister? I did not steal anything mom and dad, I swear. Oh really, then why does the note you gave me have your name on it? Okay fine, I snuck into your house and stole Marina's laptop. What do you have to say for yourself young man? Why did you steal our daughter's laptop? Because, Joyce wanted me to as payback for when you and Brianna snitched on her and Judith for stealing your laptops. 
Wesley Evan Morton, how many times do we need to tell you to stop breaking into people's houses and quit bullying Ryan? Young man, you have completely lost your mind. When are you ever going to stop being so spoiled and violent? I'm a child. You need to let me have the laptop. It's not fair that Taylor gets one. Wesley Evan Morton, stop acting like a spoiled brat. Ryan, Haley, and Edgar, I suggest you go to Joyce's house right now, because Wesley gave Marina's laptop to Joyce. We will deal with Wesley for what he did, especially because of how childish he is behaving right now. Mrs. Burnett, I believe Joyce has something that belongs to my sister Marina. Wesley snuck into my house, stole it, and gave it to Joyce. Oh my gosh, thank you for telling me Ryan. I will give it back to you and punish Joyce. Dry your eyes Marina and turn that frown upside down. Look what your big brother got. You found my laptop? Oh, thank you so much big brother. Where did you find it? It had to be one of the gangsters from my school, who snuck into our house, and stole your laptop. I swear, those kids get on my nerves a lot. Anyway, I hope you enjoy playing games with Kelly. I'm gonna play games with Felix, EJ, and Toby. Thanks Ryan. You're the best big brother ever, despite you have anger issues. You're welcome, Marina. I should always help my only sister and only brother. Enjoy playing games with Kelly. Glad I got my laptop again. Battle of the City, here I come.